injury attorneys. Now, your local sports with Spencer Tillis. For the second time in three years, the Louisiana Tech softball team is headed back to the NCAA tournament. After they earned that automatic bid from winning the Conference USA, up next comes a trip down to Baton Rouge to compete in the LSU Regional. I caught up with Lady Texas head coach Mark Montgomery to see how his team is doing as they get ready to go dancing. Well, Coach, you guys started the year with the goal of making it back to the NCAA tournament. Mission accomplished, headed back there. Have you guys come back down to earth a little bit at this point, or are you still kind of riding high after that Conference well, USA win? You know, for this team, honestly, the expectation was that. They wanted to go out and, and, and improve and, and win 40 games and, and win the conference and win the conference tournament, and it's just kind of been what's next. And uh, I think they're excited about the opportunity that they've got in front of them, and they're ready to go. Obviously, the outcome next is the Baton Rouge Regional. Now, you don't get to this point unless you're a good team. So you look at that squad you got over there, LSU, Monmouth, as well as Texas Tech. How do you feel about this group, and how do you feel like the draw that you guys got? Well, the draw's nice just because so many of our fans will be able to participate mm -hmm. and watch us play. I think that's exciting. Uh, we have some familiarity uh, with the uh, LSU Stadium, so we, we've been there a few times before, so it won't be a totally new environment to be in. So, you know, our job is just to go out and be the best version of ourselves, and Hopefully that's good enough to win a few games. Yeah, hopefully. Well, the first one comes up, Texas Tech. Tell me a little bit about the Red Raiders. What stands out about them and kind of what team you can see there on Friday? Uh, they've had a nice turnaround season uh, and uh, won a lot of ball games and, and done real well. They uh, hit with power. Uh, they like to run the bases a little bit. And, uh, they, you know, they've got solid pitching. So it's just going to be one where we're going to have to execute in all three phases of the game. One thing that I think has to play to you guys' advantage, this is the second time in three years that this team has made the NCAA tournament. And you look around, it's a senior laden group. How much do you lean on that experience and how much can experience in playing in these games really kind of pay off dividends on Friday? Well, I think it absolutely does. The fact that, you know, the first time we were a little bit like deers in headlights the, the first regional in uh, Tuscaloosa. So I think this one, uh, the girls will be a little more settled. They'll know some of the nuances of how a regional practice structure is formatted. You know, I think that'll allow them to relax and, and just not worry about some of the intangibles and just go out and play the game. Coach, a lot has been made about it. I mean, obviously, this team has been through more than probably most teams will ever go through with what's going on with the school, with the tornado and everything else. When you look at that and you're seeing that they're able to kind of play for something bigger than themselves, does it ever kind of even take you by surprise that they're able to kind of build something that's obviously huge for this community, for the program, and everybody else? It is amazing how resilient they are because, uh, you know, I don't know that every team would have been able to do that. Uh, they've done a super job of just being the best version of themselves, playing for each other and then playing for the community and playing for, you know, Louisiana Tech. And that part's just so nice that they embrace that. The action gets started on Friday afternoon. Lady Texers taking on the second seed in Texas Tech at 2 o'clock. Once they are done, the host team will have their turn. Top seed at LSU Tigers squaring off against Monmouth at 4.30. Meanwhile, the SWAC baseball tournament got started this morning down in New Orleans as Grambling State took on Alcorn State in the opening round. And quite the performance from the Tigers. They rolled to a 14-4 win. Jason Alvarez, the story of the game, he pitched all eight innings, scattering nine hits while striking out eight. Grambling will now face Alabama State tomorrow on the winner's side of the bracket at 3 o'clock. Finally tonight, you may have heard, but the Pelicans won the lotto last night when they landed the first overall pick in this year's draft, which looks to be former Duke superstar Zion Williamson. By the way, this is what the Pelicans front office looked like when they were losing their minds when they found out they got that top pick. And you want to talk about that Zion effect. In one night, New Orleans has sold more than 3,000 season tickets. And even head coach Sean Payton getting in on the fun. He's got an idea of what they can do with a prospect that is six foot seven, 284 pounds. Can you imagine him at tight end? He's an athlete coming to town, and hopefully, but the thing about this is, is it is not for certain that they will get him yet. They do have the first pick, and he, by all accounts, will be the first pick if he decides to come out. But the rumor is he's not that excited about going to New Orleans. He might end up staying at Duke for another year. Forced marriages can be tough. Yep. <laughs> Final look at the forecast after this. How would you like to consolidate your credit card bills? All